bit of canning 101 today. And there's a lot of people that's just starting out canning. And uh, whether if it's water bath or uh, in a pressure canner, a lot of them are new to a lot of these uh, different canning recipes. So tonight I had a bunch of cabbage that I had to get uh, cut up and uh, I had to do something with. So as much as we love sauerkraut, that's what we're doing tonight. And there's several different ways that I do sauerkraut. One of them is um, I ferment it in a crock. I'll just leave it out on the counter and let it ferment. Sometimes I'll let it ferment inside the refrigerator for so long. And uh, sometimes I'll let it ferment and then can it so that I'll have, uh, you know, sauerkraut for long-term storage. And that's what I really like doing. As much as I love the fermented sauerkraut, we eat it up pretty quick. So it's always, and it's good for your gut too. So we all know that. But tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the way my grandma would have done it. And uh, she would have shredded her cabbage up just like this. And right now, uh, it's time to get your cabbage out. I put mine out the other day, so I'm getting excited about that. And uh, I hope we have a good year in the garden. But I had gotten a bunch of cabbage on sale, and it's been in the refrigerator, so I had to get it put up. And like I said, I wanted to make a bunch of sauerkraut because my pantry is empty of any kind of sauerkraut. But this is the way my grandma would have done it. And this is a real simple, easy way. And it's, uh, y'all that are just starting out canning, y'all are going to like this one because it, it's just really simple. And it's going to turn out good. So what I've done is I just shredded my cabbage up. And I use my food processor. But I used to not even have a food processor. So I would just shred it up with a knife. And I've done that for many, many years. So either way will work. And I've got my quart jars. I got hot water right here in this kettle. And then I've got my water bath canner here full of water. And it's hot and, and it's waiting to go. My cabbage is just, uh, it's not been cooked or nothing. It's just raw cabbage. And I put it in my jars and I'm going to show you the process to that. I've got these done. I'm going to end up having to do a whole nother canner because I've got quite a bit of cabbage left here. But all you do is just uh, take your clean, sterile jars and just put your cabbage in there. Now, you want your cabbage in there pretty tight, but not um, not too tight. You want to be able to uh, get the air bubbles out. So just kind of pack it down in there like that. And we love sauerkraut. In fact, tonight when I was shredding all this up, I just, it made me hungry and I thought, and I just grabbed me a skillet, threw a bunch of the shredded cabbage in it, cooked it for a while, a little bit of salt and pepper and just a little bit of brown sugar in it. And uh, put me some Polish sausage in there and it was so good. That was supper, about that easy. So what you want to do is get this filled to about the top of the neck right here. The one thing that you don't want is you don't want your cabbage touching your the top of your lid. So I'm going to stop right here at the very bottom of the neck. Now the only other things you're going to need is a teaspoon. And you're going to put a teaspoon of salt in each jar. So I've got uh, canning salt. That's what I'm using. So a teaspoon in each one. Now most of the time I'll just fix a uh, ferment my cabbage in a crock like Danny's grandma always done. And we do love it like that. But I just love having sauerkraut and cabbage 
uh, in my pantry been shelf stable. So I don't have to worry about it and it's, it'll always be there. Okay, after your teaspoon of salt, you're gonna put a teaspoon of sugar. And then the last thing you're gonna put is a teaspoon of vinegar. It's just white distilled vinegar. This is what's gonna make your sauerkraut sour. We love sauerkraut with so many different things. We love it on a good chili dog too. So that's all you, all you gotta put in there. You got your cabbage, your salt, your sugar, and your vinegar. It's about that easy. So now what we gotta do is we gotta take hot water and fill our jars up. And you just wanna fill it up to, you want it to cover your cabbage. Now I know there's been a lot of people wanting me to start back canning because they're just starting out canning and they're they're wanting to see some different things being canned and I'm thinking that we should start baby steps and besides cabbage being one of the easiest things to to can I think dry beans is right up there with it so we'll probably be doing dry beans next because my pantry is getting short on pinto beans, black beans, red beans. All my different beans is getting kind of scarce. We went all winter with my pantry full. So we've done really good. You know, you can take a big old bag of any kind of your favorite beans and can them and put them up. And, uh, they're just so much better, and it's a lot cheaper, too. A bag of beans is a lot cheaper than your canned beans. Okay, I'm going to finish doing this. And as you pour that hot water over your sugar and your, your salt, it dissolves all that and takes it to the bottom of your jar. Danny's grandma had a crock that she made her sauerkraut in. And Danny says he can remember just going there and take the lid off and just getting what he wanted out to eat. And I think it sat in the back room. The, there was a room off the, the side porch. And the well was inside that room. And that room stayed so cool in there. And I'm pretty sure that's where she kept her sauerkraut crock. That was pretty neat, though, to have the a room built around the the well and she even had a bed in there and they would sleep in there in the summertime because it was cool in there so that's just really neat so i'm going to finish filling up these jars and then we'll get them in the canner okay i've got my hot water in my jars and i'm just going to take my debubbler and i'm just going to go around the jars Debubble them. Now the other thing that makes this so easy is that because you can water bath can it. And with you putting the vinegar in your cabbage, it's going to be safe. It's going to be fine. When you get them out of the canner and they're cooled off and you clean their jars up good, and put them on your shelf in your pantry. You'll leave them there for about four weeks. So in about four weeks, you'll have sauerkraut. And that's the way my grandma done sauerkraut. And like I said, there's so many different ways that people do it. And it just depends on how much time I've got 
is how I do it. And I wanted to take the time tonight to do it this way like Grandma done it. I wanted it to be shelf stable. So I'm cleaning the rims real good with vinegar. You always want your, your rims good clean so that they seal well. So I'm just going to get my lids. They're warm. They're not hot, but they're warm. We're going to put our lids on. You know, I enjoy canning so much. Um, I love it when I've got time to do it. And sometimes I just have to make time. We're going to get our rings. Whew, it's hot. So we're going to get our rings and we're going to put, put them rings on tight. Now, if we were pressure canning it, I'd say finger tight. And I know sometimes, back in the day, they would do it like this, and they wouldn't even put it in a water bath canner. They just have hot jars, hot liquid, hot rings. Put the rings on, the lids on really tight, and then they'd put them up for about four weeks, and they would seal, and uh, they'd have sauerkraut. But I'm just going to take it up one more notch and I'm going to go ahead and water bath can them. It just always makes me feel better. That's so hot I can't hardly grab the jar. Cabbage is so pretty in the jar when it's fresh like that. Okay, I'm going to get them in here in my water bath canner. You want your water to cover your top of your jars at, at least an inch, if not two. We're going to let it come to a, a good rolling rapid boil. And uh, then we're going to let them boil for 20 minutes. As soon as I get these out, I want to get my other ones in here. And it takes, um, it takes about one medium head will make about three quarts of cabbage. That's what I've got figured out. So, if that helps anybody. You know, a good size medium cabbage should fill up three quart jars. So I've got the rest of mine ready here. I've got my salt and sugar and vinegar in it. I'm going to put my water in it and it's going to go in here. And uh, we're going to make us some more kraut. Do you see how pretty they turned out? So, y'all seen how easy the process was? Nothing to it. And you'll have you a pantry full of crap for it's over with. So I hope y'all like this video. I wanted to make it short, short as I could, and and make it as easy, seem as easy as I could, so nobody be intimidated by it, uh, especially first time canners, because uh, canning is such an enjoyable thing to do for your family and to fill up your pantry, and it also saves money money too. So anybody that's just getting started, sauerkraut's an easy thing. And I think my next can video is going to be uh, some kind of beans. 
So maybe y'all give me some ideas, maybe some kind of beans y'all maybe want to learn how to can. Uh, Saturday is our last day for our mixes in our collaboration for uh, our uh, is it mix and go pantry mixes <laughs> collaboration. So uh, I've got several different season mixes I want to do for our very last one. So y'all make sure y'all come back Saturday and uh, and see all those videos by all the all the different ladies because they're gonna have some good ones. So let me get the rest of my kraut in here and uh, y'all go out and get you some cabbage and make you some kraut. And we'll see y'all Saturday. So God bless everybody. Thank you.